Randy's running things. You know. But once again, uh, when we open it up for questions for the coach and players, please give us your name, your affiliation, and to whom you're asking the question. Kevin, uh, give us an overview. Well, obviously, a really well played game came down to obviously the last out there in the ninth, and um, you know, started on, on, on the mound with Hurston. He was outstanding tonight. I think he had struck out twelve over six, and um, offensively, um, we hit some home runs early, get, get us to a five one lead, and then um, we knew Oral Roberts was going to be really difficult to deal with. They got an older lineup, but obviously, Kate came in there at the end and, and shut things down for us. So we're excited about being two zero, and looking forward to playing on Wednesday. Okay, I'll open up for questions for the student athletes. <clears throat> and uh, everybody just jump up at once now. <laughs> okay, here in the middle. Yeah, Kevin Brockway at Gainesville Sun. Uh, Luke, uh, I'm just curious uh, what you were looking for in that pitching at Homer and what, what does it mean to have another day, particularly early on, where you guys, uh, you know, use the long ball to, to kind of build some offense and build the lead? Yeah, I think we started off good with getting a couple balls we could handle and um, driving them over the yard, out of the yard, and kind of setting the tone early. But that at bat, mainly, I think he got me 0-2 on two changeups, and then I was just kind of thinking heater and then reacting to a changeup. I wasn't going to let the change up, I mean, the heater get by me. So luckily, he threw me one over the plate that I was able to drive in. Yeah. Okay, Kendall. Kendall Rogers, D1 Baseball. Hurston, how would you just kind of evaluate your stuff tonight? Obviously, a, a very good performance. I mean, overall, it was uh, the end result was good, and that's all that matters. But um, kind of took me a little bit to settle in, and you know, this is a it's a big stage, and obviously a lot of feelings, that, a lot of adrenaline and emotions that come with this game. So uh, be able to settle in, and obviously I didn't have the best feel for my fastball or command for my fastball, and so uh, to be able to have the three all speed pitches and rely on those and um, work with BT really well, and um, you know, just be able to control the game from there. Okay, here. Right there. Uh, Scott Carter, FloridaGators.com. Josh, I mean, you guys are obviously where you want to be. Uh, just, but what's it like to, you know, have these close games and what's as a player, especially tonight with strange sequence and just take us through maybe that last inning? Uh, yeah, it's very intense. Uh, like Sully said, we knew Oral Roberts was going to be a tough opponent. And they've been good all year and beating good teams all year. So, uh, yeah, it was a very intense game. Uh, but, you know, we got to stay together as a team and that's, something we always uh, talk about in the dugout, you know, staying together as a team and uh, trying to just move forward no matter what happens. And, uh, yeah, that last inning was, uh, was very intense. You know, we had a couple guys on, and um, fortunately enough, we, you know, got a ground ball that we were hoping to turn a double play, but uh, it chopped a little too high, so we were able to get the, the second out there at second. And, um, yeah, we had, you know, complete faith in Cade Fisher. Um, we knew he was coming in there to do his job. And, yeah, it was just, you know, Amazing for him to come in there and uh, fill up the strike zone and uh, get that last out to Mikey. Okay, Jake. Jake McKeever, College Baseball Central. Josh Lee, y'all both got out on really early. What was the scouting report on the pitcher and how did y'all kind of attack it? Um, we knew that he was going to slow the ball down against us. Um, but, you know, early on in the game, he was beating a couple of us with some heaters. So uh, it was more so just see his pitches up, see everything up in the zone. And, you know, once we got through the lineup that first time and we noticed that he was um, going back to his fastball quite often, um, you know, for me at least, my, my approach, my second at bat, you know, I didn't want to get beat with the heater. Um, so, you know, I took that first pitch change up and, you know, I was sitting dead red heater because that's what he beat me on my first at bat for the strikeout. So um, luckily I got it and uh, caught it out front and kept it fair. Yeah, like he said, I feel like we... Definitely, we're thinking. I mean, based on what he's done all year, it kind of, kind of likes to slow the ball down. But you know, the heater always also plays a little different. Um, he showed early on, people are kind of getting beat by it. But I'd say, like what he said, I didn't really want to get beat by the heater, so I was kind of reacting to the off speed, but sitting on the heater and was able to um, get a heater out over the plate and drive it. Okay, back here, Matt Talbert from World Baseball Network. Uh, Hurston, how does it feel to have a catcher like BT be such a workhorse uh, throughout the course of this year? Yeah, it's a, it's a really big advantage um, that a lot of people don't understand the value of and the value in and uh, having a guy with so much experience and, um, you know, seeing what he's done over the past two years. And, you know, you, you talk to any uh, any pitcher on the staff and any player on the staff, he, he, handle, he, he manages the staff really well. He manages the game really well. Any moment of the game, he makes sure, um, you know, he'll talk with his infielders. 
uh, no matter what. He'll get on you in any moment. Um, but he's also there to support you. He'll get you through the game. And, you know, I know there's a couple of times through this year where I didn't have my best stuff, but uh, he was there to push me through the game. And, you know, he's uh, really great with calling pitches. And um, he handles he handles the pressure of ball games really, really well. And uh, it's been it's been really nice to have him behind the plate. Okay. We'll go over here first with, with Scott. Yeah, Scott Carter, FloridaGators.com. Hurts done a – you said last week against South Carolina you probably had your – what you thought was your worst bullpen of the season. How would you feel before today? And then second, just what's – really? I mean, these last three starts for you have been pretty tremendous. Just what does it mean just to do it on this stage? Yeah, I think the bullpens uh, – I mean, I – a lot of a lot of starting pitchers probably say this, but the the pregame bullpen is one of those things where you don't really put much stock, uh, stock or thought into it. It's kind of one of those things where you feel your pitches, like you feel the spin, and you know, kind of get a feel for the body. You know, how how are you feeling that day? But um, at the end of the day, it's all about stepping on the stepping on the mound for the first pitch of the game, and um, just going from there, forgetting everything that's happened before that. You know, everything that's happened before that first pitch doesn't matter, and so being able to step on the mound and forget that, have a clean slate, and then. Um, I think I think that's what I would say has helped me through the past three starts and past couple of starts really just being able to step on the mound, throw strike one, and um, trust the guys behind me. Trust that we're gonna we're all gonna have a good game. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, Josh, you guys get the first two. Now you're in a pretty good position. You have rest until Wednesday. What does this do, confidence wise, for the team uh, to be able to pull off these first two and and be in a good position to get to the finals? Oh, it definitely builds a lot of confidence, but. Um... We can't overlook anybody we play, um, you know, no matter what the outcome is of the next game and who we face on Wednesday. we got to come in uh, with the attack mentality and try to focus on, you know, one play at a time, one inning at a time. So it definitely builds a lot of confidence. But uh, we had a lot of confidence coming into this uh, World Series. And um, the biggest thing is we just can't overlook anybody, you know, because anybody can beat anybody in baseball. And, you know, these past couple uh, games that have been played early on in the World Series have been uh, – kind of like thrill seekers towards the last couple of innings. So, like I said, um, anything can happen. We just got to come in here with the uh, win mentality and attack whoever we play. Okay, we have one more question for the players. and get it from Zach here. Jake McKeever, College Baseball Central. Josh Luke, there were a lot of weird plays to this aspect where the game kind of stopped for a second. How did y'all kind of stay locked in in those moments? Uh, the only thing you could do in those moments is, um, you know, push them to the back of your mind and just focus on what's next. Um, you know, for instance, that inside the park home run, you know, you got everybody going crazy and this, you know, wonderful loud stadium. Um, it's tough to kind of figure out what's going on. And, you know, we made some mistakes defensively, um, you know, setting up that play. So we just got to learn from that and, you know, move on. And, you know, just like my error when, you know, I missed the ball and um, they got closer to, you know, tying the game up and stuff like that. You just got to move forward because, you know, you can't dwell on what happened in the past. If you do, you know, bad things are just going to come rolling down. So. We just got to um, keep our head on a swivel and uh, move on to the next play. Yeah, like you said. If you want, go ahead and comment. I feel like you just yeah, got to just be able to move on from those. I mean, if you kind of let that hang in the back of your mind, it's not going to put you in a position to have success for the next couple of plays that are coming your way. So I think you just got to be able to move forward on those and because you know the ball is always going to find a way back to you. So being able to forget about that is just going to put yourself in the best situation to be successful. Okay, thanks, Matt. Uh, that'll be it for the players. Thanks, and we'll see y'all. Take two days off, okay? <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you. Okay. Okay, let's open it up now for questions for Sally. And... We'll start with Kendall. Kendall Rogers, D1 Baseball. Sully, I think the last bad start that Hurston had, I think I saw him at A&M. And since then, he's been really, really good. I guess from your perspective, what are you kind of just seeing in his progression week in and week out to get him to the to level that he's at today? I think he's been able to make adjustments in game. You can kind of tell that they were swinging early in the count. And he's had the ability to throw his curveball and his slider and his split um, early in the count. I think maybe through the first half of the year, his split was more of a two-strike pitch. But now he's been able to slow the ball down. And when, when people are, are swinging early count like they did, he's got, he's got multiple weapons that he can go to. Okay, Kevin. 
Yeah, Kevin Brock by Gainesville Sun. Uh, the mound visit situation, do you have someone that's like charting that in the dugout, or how did that get kind of lost track in the eighth inning? Yeah, we, we, we keep it in the dugout, and I had a brief conversation with the umpire before the inning, and it was totally my mistake, and no one feels more terrible about it than I do. But at the same time, you know, it's like a player that has a bad game or gives up a, you know, you know, you want to run there in the ninth or something in extra innings, you, you got to move on from it. But, um, you know, I told the team I apologized to them at the end of the game, and, you know, they just said, they you know, they had my back. And, you know, on the flip side of that, you know, Cade comes in and from, from you know, Friday night and is put in a really tough position, probably has never pitched in an environment like that or in a situation like that. So the, the one positive there is, you know, he, he should feel really good about himself. I know the team – was fired up, but um, you know I'm 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 fairly hard on myself a lot. But you know I wake up tomorrow morning I'm gonna I'm gonna you know get these guys ready to play on Wednesday. That's the bottom line. Okay, Jake. Jake McKeever, College Baseball Central coach. He used Neely in the first game and then he used him again tonight. How do you feel about his arm going forward? Who who's that? Neely, the closer. Yeah, I mean he's fine. We we we've used him on back to back nights before this year. Um, but now everybody's got two days off, and then obviously, you know, Jack hasn't pitched yet. He didn't pitch in the Supers, or so he should be ready to go by Wednesday for sure, obviously. Okay, Mike. Mike LaPresti, NCAA.com. Not only as a participant, but just as a college baseball guy, how good is it for the game? This College World Series has had great finish after great finish after great finish. Just how good is it for the game what's happened the last three nights? Yeah, I think I think it just shows you the parity that, you know, of, of – college baseball. I mean, you know, every game seems to be really, really exciting. I mean, I think, you know, obviously LSU and, and Tennessee last night was a three-run game. Everything else seems like it's a one-run game. So I think it's great for the game. It's obviously, it's very exciting for, for people to watch. And like I said, you know, but, you know, the eight teams are here for a reason. You know, it's not easy to get here. So not only are you playing good teams, you're playing, you know, really good teams are playing their best at the end of the year. Okay, Scott. Yeah, Scott Carter, FloridaGators.com. So you've been out here enough to know that you know when you win your first two, it makes life easier. I mean, what's kind of, what would be your approach and just message to these guys the next couple of days? Um, we, we we've got to keep our edge. You know, we haven't we haven't done it yet. So, um, sure, we're, we're we're one game away from the finals, but we still got to play one more game. So, um, you know. They just they they've got to stay the course and what we've done the entire year and don't take anything for granted and be, and be ready to go on Wednesday. Okay, Kevin. Uh, the home runs tonight. You guys broke the school record, you know, one thirty-five. But just how much did they give you? You know, that give you a jolt or a lift and being able to knock their starter out in the fourth inning. Yeah, I mean, you'd like to at some point maybe we get a couple guys on and hit a three-run homer, so the solar ones. But you no, know, certainly. Um, our team is built different this year than maybe it was some other years, and um, we've, we've been fortunate to where the win, you know, on Friday night, the last three innings would start, you know, to die down, and then tonight the win was in our favor as well. So, but we are prepared. If, if we've got to change the way we score runs um, and play a little, you know, more hit and run and, and run the bases a little bit more aggressively and that type of thing to, to manufacture runs, you know, we, we do have the ability to do that too. Okay, Kendall. Kendall Roger D1 Baseball. Sully, just, I guess, talk about Cade Fisher. I mean, he goes out there a little bit quicker to get ready on the mound than he he's used to. He's usually doing that in the bullpen. Mm -hmm. Then in the tenth situation there in the ninth, I mean, just the job that he did as a freshman in that kind of just pressure cooker, pressure cooker situation. Yeah, I think that's, that's the one silver lining in that whole thing. That, I mean, I'm sure he's never pitched in, a, in an environment like that or in a situation like that. And... Um, you know, and coming back from Friday night's outing and him being able to do that, um, I think speaks volumes of his maturity, his competitive spirit. And like I said, um, you know, he, he needed to throw the ball across the plate and did. And, you know, like I said, you know, if there's one positive thing that came out of my mistake was, was Cade being able to get the last four outs. Okay. So Scott, okay, this should be our last question. Just yeah, Sully, I just want to go back to Hurston for a minute. He didn't want to talk about himself too much, but to do what he's done in these three starts in the tournament on this stage, I mean, you've been around the game, you know good pitching. Just what's it say about this guy? 
Um, well, you, you you can't get to this to this spot without having Sproat and Waldrop, and now Cags has got to follow up on Wednesday, and, and you know we've got a guy at the back end in Neely, and um, yeah, I mean, when when we've been in this position and we've won the first two. Um, or have gotten to the finals, the starting pitching has been really good. And both Brandon and, and Hurston have been just outstanding. Sally, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see, see you on Wednesday. See you Wednesday afternoon.